Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about two trending things here, over the top and millennials. So ladies and gentlemen, walking on the stage right now, he's with us. Give it up for, with a loud OH welcome, Mr. Tarun Katyal. Well, she's got the energy to wake you guys up from lunch. I don't think I'll be able to hold that up. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to try and try hard. Somehow, for the last three conferences I've been to, I've been given this post-lunch timing. I don't know why. I'm starting to put a trend to it now. Maybe they think I can wake you guys up, or maybe I think, you know, they think that anyway people are going to be eating lunch, just let it get over with, right? <coughs> Let's get that uh, decision done post this uh, little discussion or conversation that we must have. Let's make the session a little bit more interactive, interruptive. So if you have any questions to ask, if you think that, you know, you want to add to what I'm saying, please go ahead, raise your hand, and we'll have a discussion. And I'm hoping that the uh, organizers will have some mics to get up to you guys. As I entered the OEC today, somebody uh, woke up, uh, walked up to me and reminded me that I was last year in 2006, um, also mentioned that I had a lot more gray hair now than I ever did. Uh, but what it did to me was reminded me of how, you know, media has evolved over the last uh, so many years, how we evolved as media people, as clients, as partners, as people who've used outdoor, but also as uh, people who've looked at granularity of brand building as well as uh, data conversion over the years. The topic I was given was that out of home attracts millennials. I was given a presumed topic. Uh, it wasn't a question mark at the end of the statement. I think because you speak at OAC, uh, it's assumed that uh, it will attract uh, your sector as well as attract the audience that you need to get to, and you have to use the outdoor medium. Is that how it's supposed to be, Charan? <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, and I think uh, you know there was nothing wrong with uh, with the subject or the thought. I just thought that we could have uh, explored more than that. So I'm going to go out and, and talk to you guys slightly uh, at more width than just the millionaires and OTT. Why I say that is because I think uh, OTT in itself and is a much abused word. Most of you guys will understand what OTT stands for, which is over the top, but that's really nothing. Uh, over the top means that you don't go through the traditional way of delivery and you have a new way of delivery. But it could be over-the-top calling, which is what WhatsApp, Skype, and some of the other apps are. It could be over-the-top banking, which is one of the some of the banking apps are. Or it could be over-the-top video streaming, which we do as, as Z5 and some of the other businesses in the country. So over-the-top is just, it's just a way of saying that the route for distribution of things is changing, right? How many of you guys saw... Um, Game of Thrones this last season? Yeah, many of you. And what was the statement? The winter's, right? The winter's coming. Uh, and it's increasingly that that we all need to realize. The winter's coming, uh, which is that the world is changing. And OTT is just one more abbreviation to the, the way the world is changing. What was this OTT segment till about three or four years ago, it was fairly niche. Uh, I had another interesting conversation. Somebody came up to me and said that, do you know that you know, I was one of the first employees who created uh, OTT in this country way back in 2007, 2008, and we worked on you know, literally 2, 2G, 3G um, handsets and were trying to deliver video on, in a two and a half GB kind of environment where we would watch something called Mobisodes and episodes. And I said, we still do the same. Largely, video content delivery is still the same. It's just on much better platforms. It's much better video encoding. It's much better user experiences. It's, and it's also through the line on many, many platforms. But what has happened in the last you know, two to three years is that data has been democratized, right? Posts coming in of uh, these cheap data plans, and I won't name one uh, company who did this, but that one company led to a, a cascade of all data companies or all telecom providers as well as broadband providers bringing in the parity between volume and pricing and, and starting to hand down over 30 GB of data to every single user every single month. And you put that much data into somebody's hand, what are they going to do? They're going to do OTT. They're going to do stuff at their own convenience. They're going to be ending up doing banking. They will 
are going to end up doing shopping, but also more importantly, they're going to end up doing digital video streaming. And what happens when everybody does that? What happens when, you know, instead of doing mass media campaigns that were being targeted to, uh, you know, all pervasive audiences, you start having audiences giving you, not using your data, but also giving you data about their usage patterns, about their purchase patterns, about stuff that you didn't know about them all this while. What happens is really that you start to do personalization. And when you start to do personalization, you start to start get out of mass media advertising and doing one-on-one -on -one communication. And which is what OTT is really all about. It is about personalization, it's about segmentation, it's about convenience, it's about giving you what you want rather than giving you what everybody else would also want. So people ask me that will television go away, right? My background is in television, radio, and mass media. And this is a question that I get asked at all panels. Maybe they call me only for that. Uh, because, you know, they think it's a little TV bhi aata hai aur thoda, uh, digital bhi aata hai, kuch kuch karega. Uh, so, when people ask me these questions about will television go away, my question is no. Television as a screen will not go away. But what will start to change and is already changing rapidly is two things. Is how you deliver to that screen. So, do you need to deliver through a pipe to that screen? Or can you do this over the internet? And secondly, how do you purpose content on that screen? Do you have to watch linear television, which is what could be for the lowest common denominator and could be at, you know, at the program choice of the broadcaster? Or can you watch video on demand, your convenience, your choice, as and when you want to? So, and what's the real difference between linear television and VOD? The only difference between linear television and VOD is personalization. It's choices. It's, a, it's your ability to do what you want to, when you want to, how you want to. It's about your ability to consume media at convenience. Right? And when all of that comes in, what you're developing increasingly is a data economy. Right? You must have heard this word that data is the new oil. How many of you guys believe in it? Right? Some people believe in it. And because this is outdoor, most others are not supposed to believe in it, is it? Yeah, data data se kuch nahi bete, achhi hoarding lagao, sabko dikti hai, wo bikti hai. So, as this digital economy booms, you will expect all of these clients to become your clients, to your customers, right? And their way of doing business is increasingly very different from your way of doing business. It's because their way of doing business is one-on-one. -on -one. Their way of doing business is on extreme level of ROI. Their business is on extreme level of attribution to success, to business metrics, to KPIs. And for any economy to grow, they've got to grow with the way the world is going. If data is the new oil, if technology is the new wheel, then the only way that this, this entire outdoor or out-of-home ecosystem can tend to thrive with this world is when they merge this into this data economy, this technology economy, very, very seamlessly. Now, you know, when you talk about millennials and you talk about OTT, you're, you're actually pushing this case of data and technology even higher. Because as you all know, millennials are the higher, highest consumers of data. They are the highest consumers of dig digital video. And yes, they are also more outdoor. Fallacy. What do millennials do? They do, go, do they go out and shop? Millennials are the largest contributor, contributors to this e-com econ, econ, economy, right? They shop, yes. They shop more, yes. But they shop because of the ease of convenience of shopping at home at their own given time. And must remember that. They use offline to go and, and, and look at those objects, which is their, where their consumer durables and clothes and so on and so forth, but they, they largely buy online. What do millennials do in terms of habits? 
in terms of life and lifestyles. And if you have millennial children or if you have millennial friends, you should keep them. They keep you going. Uh, then you would know that more time spent on these screens than on doing, you know, new things. Unfortunately, when is the last time anybody went for dinner? When is, any, when is the last time you went to a restaurant for dinner? Only one person? When is the last time? Last night? Last week? How many people went for dinner last week? Yeah, almost everybody? What's, what's the scene that you see in any restaurant? Two people sitting across each other, not talking to each other. They're, they tend to talk to their screens and are talking to fourth, the third or the fourth person sitting off each other and maybe laughing at what they're seeing on that screen, but not, not cracking a joke at each other. Have you seen that often enough or have I only seen it? W what is that economy? It's that data economy? It's that millennial economy? Right? Unfortunately, this economy is so personalized, it's so data consuming that they are going to live in a different new world. They are living, living in a virtual digital world. And increasingly, kids don't want to talk to each other but play multiplayer games with each other. They are happier. And if any of your kids have Xboxes or V or, or you know, the other Sony PlayStation and stuff like that, you would know that they're playing games with people in Europe. They're game playing games with people in, in America but they're possibly not playing games with their neighbors. And that is the new reality. So in all of this, am I here to do doomsday for outdoor? No, not at all. I think outdoor is going to become increasingly important. And I'll tell you why. It's because increasingly, what the digital economy is also doing, and the amount of data that you know about consumers also doing, is allowing a whole new ecosystem of startups. It's allowing a whole new ecosystem of reaching out to newer and new consumers. It's allowing you to launch brands, campaigns, and ideas much more easily. You don't have to be Unilever. You don't have to create a million point of sales, uh, you know, outlets to be able to launch a brand. You can do it online. You can reach the same number of people over a period of time through digital that you couldn't reach for so many years by building distribution, right? You could be, an, you could be a lifestyle brand, it could, you could be a, a clothing brand, you could be a, a, even an FMC, a premium FMCG brand that possibly does not even retail offline at all. You have furniture brands like Pepper Fry, like Urban Ladder, who only have experience centers offline but have possibly never sold a single piece offline. And imagine having a bricks and mortar brand which, or a furniture brand that you've never really you know, seen offline at all. And still gets launched and still has millions and millions of consumers buying and has large volumes from, from you know, a smaller city in Kerala to as far as the Northeast. When this whole startup economy starts to burgeon, when this whole startup economy starts to give way to newer and newer ideas coming alive, if the whole startup economy knows enough about consumers, their needs, their likes, desires, and are able to make products which actually can change the entire ecosystem, where, what are they going to use? They are going to use outdoor to make an impact. They are going to use outdoor to build newer and newer brands that are never known in the physical space. Because they're not doing point of sale, they're not available in their local Kirana, they're not available in your local store, hyper store. They're only available online or they can be seen outdoor. But they're also going to ask you for more accountability. They're going to ask you for more measurement. They're going to ask you for more data. They're going to ask you for more deeper level planning insights. And they're going to put you on more ROI-led pricing. And this is something that the outdoor industry has got to be really ready for. When we launched Z5, we were very different from everybody else. We launched five years later than most other over-the-top digital video streaming platforms in the country. And we then realized that to be different and to be uniquely positioned, we need to talk to this new Indian who was, who was guzzling data. But this new Indian wasn't the English Indian. He wasn't the key Bombay, Delhi metro consumer. He was out there in deeper pockets of India consuming different kind of content. 
And so one of the things we first did was we called it the three Vs. We created a video platform that could talk to very different formats. So from one end, the platform was Geo feature phones, which was the small feature phone that's now supporting video. And to the other end, we needed to be available on Samsung and LG, big smart TV, Tizen, smart TV, 4K, HD kind of devices. And right in the middle, you would have the sub $100 Chinese phones to Android phones to you know, lower CPU or lower memory uh, Android phones to higher iOS, Apple devices, and so on and so forth. What does this whole ecosystem have to do with us? I wish making an app like they were talking about at the OEC app and making a digital video streaming platform was kind of similar. What it really does is when you have such plethora of devices, your video needs to be transcoded and encoded and your app needs to be sized for all of these devices separately. So that you can get a good viewing experience, you can get, you know, you don't have buffering on your, on your video start, in your video, you know, video start failures are down, you're able to make sure that consumers can complete the video without any intermittent buffering in the middle and most importantly, your phone can support that app. And when you talk to such plethora of audiences from one end to another, what do you really need to do? You need to do micro-segmentation. And what do you expect of your media partners? You expect micro-segmentation and ability to target from your media partners, right? We end up using very deep, incisive data management platforms, consumer data platforms, which, are, which allow us to do this kind of segmentation. But what is our expectation from you? Our expectation increasingly will be about you being able to match this segmentation with our segmentation. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I was at, uh, I was judging um, an Accenture uh, artificial intelligence uh, startup India kind of conference uh, where there are DMP platforms which now read the census and are allow, allowing you to layer geographical data by consumption of and various consumption of various goods, durable, so on and so forth, to be able to use by banking, by Unilever, by others in targeting and launching products in those areas. I thought that one of the best use cases for a product like that was out of home. Because that kind of pin code planning and that kind of detail incisive data in regions in areas could allow a lot of us who are looking for such kind of consumers to tap into your media outlets that are available for such kind of consumers in those kind of areas. But does out of home understand that data? In parts yes, in parts no. Does out of home refresh that? And this data is real time. Does out of home refresh that data? Does out of home have user ID, match IDs kind of data for these kind of you know, geographical units? Yes and no. And when you start to look at the new economy that is developing, the new digital economy that is developing, and start to understand their needs, start to understand where they, the way they do digital planning, and the way they do attribution of data to their business KPIs, you will start to match your offerings to this economy. I would urge all of you guys who have built such a large and massive economy over the last so many years to go beyond creating surface level impact for brands, which you will continue to do because there will be newer and newer brands that will launch at a much faster pace than they've ever been done in the last decade. But go on to help these brands and create sustainable advertising with you. Because otherwise what will happen is that you will hope that one new sector comes every two or three years they spend a fair amount of money in building competitive impact. You call one of their speakers like me on the podium to talk to you. And then you find another new sector after two or three years to go and attack. This cycle may not always continue. And you will then have patches in the middle of two or three years where you don't have enough categories launching. And you don't have sustainable advertising that you have created from a lot more many sectors. Because when I drive around Bombay, and I'm sure that that's also you know, relevant to Delhi, today, out of, out, out of home is dominated by video OTT platforms, right? And will this continue forever? This will only continue to forever if, if this kind of impact is one needed by the sector, two, competitive pressures continue in the segment, 
or three, you can create attributable advertising for us. But because believe you me, I've been in many sectors. I've been in the growth of you know, cable and satellite television in the late 90s, early 2000. I've been in the launch of radio in this country and I'm now luckily, and they call me right time, right place, in the, in the throes of the launch of the OTD segment in this country. All of this becomes cyclical if you don't make it sustainable. And that is what you know, TV did for many years ago. They made it sustainable by sustained and continuous data improvements, sustained and continuous technology improvements, and to be able to perform ROI for advertisers on an ongoing basis. This will have to happen for out of home. Now, whether it happens at scale, whether it happens in Bombay, Delhi, whether it happens at the granular user level, whether it happens at segments and cohorts, whether it happens consistently on an ongoing basis, whether it happens you know, once a year or once in six months, will be a decision that some of you guys who are in a position to drive this agenda are going to take. I would urge all of you guys to think about your customer. Customers like us, think about our needs, think about how we allocate media money, think about how we allocate customer acquisition sums, and then work this out in conjunction with that. Because it's not advertising anymore. I'm not saying advertising is dead, but it's not advertising anymore. 70, 80% of sums of money on all digital companies are not spent on advertising, but are spent on customer acquisition. And customer acquisition is the new reality of media and marketing and advertising. So if you can go down that direction, if you can bridge this gap, if you can commit to building value in yourself so that you're able to build value in your customers, this industry is going to grow by leaps and bounds. And I'm sure some of your leaders who are sitting here and, and, and I'm provoking some of this thinking, or I'm, they're already thinking on those lines, are going to hasten this process and are going to create some sense of urgency for us to be able to create joy in this relationship. Thank you so much for having me here this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope I was able to make some, you know, some points of ponder for all of you guys. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Mr. Katyal. Requesting you to continue to be with us on stage because we're now going to welcome Sri Ranga Sudhakara, Managing Director and Founder of Yoma Technologies, to join us on stage. As you see, he's got the tab in his hand, the iPad. The iPad, okay. And he's walking on with three questions that he's chosen from the many, many questions that have come for you. You're going to get a chance to answer these three questions, sir. So, gentlemen. What a session. Um, you know, perfect session post-lunch. I think definitely woke all of us up. Lots to think about. And I think my two favorite words was sustainable advertising and attribute, attribute, attribution. attribution to our advertising. I think that's really the key takeaway for you know, the, all of us here, the stakeholders here. And as Tarun gave us the direction, if you're able to figure that part out in our industry, I think it's going to be sustainable for multiple industries. So thank you so much. That was fantastic. Um, coming to the questions, um, so it was very funny. A lot of the answers he was giving he was giving was actually some of the questions that all of you were actually asking so it was almost like tarun was reading your guys mind and answering all those questions like is tv going to be there when ott is there and you know tons of questions around that but i think a couple of the questions that i thought were very interesting was uh, nupur mehra from jcd core she said don't you feel the need of r is to have better connect between oh media owners mainline agency and the brands to have better connect and belief, as currently OH campaign uh, briefs are dispersed and finalized with only the leftover budget. Actually, you'd be surprised, huh? Out of them is very expensive. It can't be done on leftover budgets. <laughs> if anybody thought you could do a campaign in Bombay on leftover budgets, please take my business. <laughs> Uh, so many times when I sit down to look at, uh, and I'm quite granular and hands-on, uh, some of you who have worked with me will tell you that, uh, and I look at my weekly review and I look at my spends by media, and because we spend exceptionally high on, on outdoor, uh, it, is, it is the medium of choice almost after digital. Obviously, we spend more on digital, it's attributable, it's direct in customer acquisition, and so on and so forth. 
But it's almost higher than TV for the last 12 months. Even though we have a TV network within our ecosystem. So I can tell you that outdoor is not cheap. Uh, we don't treat it as, as leftovers. We keep it uh, within our initial planning. We also have a very different agency that designs our outdoor units than even our advertising units. Um, and this can only continue if you guys work, work more closely with us, right? We are, we are great believers of outdoor. I'm personally a great believer of the outdoor system, you know. Some of your key sponsors, like Laksha and all, have been our big, uh, you know, partners for all this while. We've done a lot of work with them. Uh, and, you know, and what we've been able to see with most of the agencies like Madison or Kinetic or the others who've delivered, they put their best foot forward in getting us a great campaign. But can this continue forever is the question that I ask you guys uh, rather than ask myself. Next question is from Salvador Aguirre from Lakshya. Um, OTT platforms do not have ads for now. Will OTT platform will have to opt for ads in the coming days to generate profits? And will consumers, consumers adapt it or uns unsubscribe the services as they're paying for it? Oh, OTT platforms are full of advertising. We get complaints on an hourly basis. So we have two kind of businesses we do, AWOT and SWOT. Um, and you know, we're not as smart as Mr. Jalan, but uh, so we don't sell as well as he does. Uh, but we have a lot of uh, attribution-led ad tech advertising. So most of what you see on OTT is on user cohorts, on user principles, on business KPIs. You, you see a lot of performance advertising. Uh, and on our AV, AVOD system, which is the ad-supported business, where we do most of our catch-up TV, our movies, uh, our music, uh, output and so on and so forth, we do only advertising and that's the only source of revenue. And if, if you don't make money, you don't make money. So please watch some of our advertising. <laughs> the last question from uh, Kritika Yerunkar from Rappo. Uh, majority of OTT players in India deploy OH and top metros. How does Z5 reach smaller markets in Tier 2 and Tier 3 towns and drive aspiration among the millennials there? No, we've used outdoor in a lot of different cities. We've, I mean, in, in fact, we did a show called Rang Bars in December last year, December, January last year, and we did about 23 towns. Uh, and uh, to give you guys credit, it was actually, it saw a huge spike in, in both subscribers and, and viewing uh, in all those markets. It depends on the product we have. So we have mass products, like this one which we just did called Kafir with Dia Mirza. I don't know if some of you guys have seen it or not. It's a great show, but it's also a very high voltage, you know, uh, drama with, with Kashmir as its backdrop, which is very relatable and big uh, faces from Bollywood. Uh, but then there are e eclectic shows like, you know, uh, we just did another one called uh, Bombers which was primarily around football and around millennials, and we used football locations like Goa and, and Kerala and West Bengal and some of the others. You've got to build context, right, and make it contextual. We're currently running a good, great campaign called Rejects, which is slightly more urban than we need it to be. Uh, the other thing we do is when we do big Bollywood blockbusters, like we did Uri and Simba, we took it down to every single town that we could or we thought we needed to in the country that had outdoor that could sustain it. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Now you got to pick the winner. The, what are the best questions out of those three questions? The last question, I think the first two are kind of answered. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the, so the winner is Kritika Yerunkar, Rappo, India. Congratulations, Kritika. Join us on stage. How cool is that? Can we please have... The check right here, gentlemen, center stage, please. Kritika's walking on. She's got a big 10,000 rupee smile. I think it's even bigger. Fantastic. Brought to you by Alak Advertising and Publicity. Gentlemen, center stage, please. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Kritika. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for her. And what a fantastic session. Let's say ooh la la together at three, two, one. Ooh la la, what a session that was. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, gentlemen.